Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today I'm going to be sharing a full six-day hypertrophy program based on the push-pull legs Arnold split. This is a combination of push-pull legs and the Arnold into a six-day setup. Both push-pull legs and the Arnold split are popular setups for bodybuilding. And it is possible to combine these two splits, which allows you to get some advantages from both sides. This is basically how I would lay out the split. We've got pull, push, legs, then chest, back, shoulders, arms, and legs. Here's the push-pull leg segment a little bit rearranged, and here's the Arnold split segment. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. Next, we'll talk about the weekly layout or how to split up the workouts across the week. And finally, we'll talk about the pros and cons of this six-day push-pull legs Arnold split program. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's push-pull legs Arnold split program. It's a moderate volume program set up for intermediate to advanced athletes. We've got pull, push, leg day one, chest, back, shoulders, arms, and leg day number two. So we have your push-pull leg segment first in the week, and then you have your Arnold split segment. Here we have the exercises, and over here are the sets and reps. Down here we have the total number of sets for each workout, and here are the total number of sets for each muscle group each week. And you'll see that this is a moderate volume program. Let's start off with pull day. So our first day starts off with barbell rows for the back, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have cable rows also for the back, three sets of eight to 12, and then neutral grip lat pull downs also for the back, two sets of 10 to 15. This pull day, since it comes first in the week, actually gets a little bit of priority here. So I do really want to try to go heavier on these barbell rows and to really aim for progressive overload. In particular, since we've swapped push and pull days, you're gonna have some rest between barbell rows and squats coming up on leg day number one. Next, we have barbell upright rows, which hit the side delts, but also the traps. So I'm gonna slip them in on pull day, four sets of six to 10. And I like to spread up my side delt work so you can perform better across each set. Then we have cable lateral raises also for the side delts, three sets of H12. Going on to push day, we start off with weighted dips for the chest and also the triceps. And these are actually going to be your main chest movement of the program. So I really want you to be focusing on progressing these. We're gonna be doing three sets in total and we're gonna actually use a reverse pyramid scheme here. So you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps. Then you're gonna back off about five to 10% for your next set and then another five to 10% for your third set. Reverse pyramids allow you to get in that heavy strength work on your top set, but still add some more volume in with your reverse pyramid sets. You're gonna drop off about five to 10% and the number of reps could be different. So you could end up getting more reps than this rep range and that's okay. Basically shoot for an RIR target. This is a very similar programming scheme to the top set back off method that you know I like to include a lot in my programs. It is something different, so you can give it a try and see if you like it. If you don't like dropping the weight off the second time, you can always just keep it steady, like with my usual top set back off method. Then we have machine flies for the chest, three sets of 12 to 20. After that, easy bar skull crashers for the triceps, three sets of six to 10. After that, dumbbell preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. And you can do these single arm set up on a bench set at about 60 degrees. Then we have full ROM lateral raises for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. And these are basically just lateral raises where you go all the way up to the top until your arms are overhead. Finally, we have cable curls also for the biceps, two sets of eight to 12. So you can see what I did here. What I did with the split was that I swapped push and pull days in your traditional push pull legs setup. And then I took biceps and swished it with some of our side delt work. This gives us a couple of unique advantages. It allows us to train our biceps when they're fresh and not when they're fatigued after back training. This is one of the downfalls of the push pull leg split and it works really nicely here. Also, it allows us to get in a higher frequency for our side delt training, which allows us to fit in more productive volume. Next, we have leg day number one. We start off with squats for the quads, and we're doing four sets here, also with a reverse pyramid scheme. One top heavy set of five to eight reps, then you're gonna back off weight five to 10% two times, which means your fourth set, your last set, is gonna be the same weight as your third set. So top set followed by five to 10% weight drop, then another five to 10% weight drop, and then keep the weight stable. And again, use your RIR to guide you so you may be able to get in more reps. Then we have barbell back extensions for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12, followed by Smith machine split squats for the quads and also the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12. These are basically like a standing lunge in the Smith machine. After that, we have leg extensions for the quads, two sets of 12 to 20 reps. And we wrap up this workout with machine calf raises for the calves, five 
five sets of eight to 12. Going on to chest and back day. So now we're in our Arnold split segment. We start off with weighted chin ups for the back, three sets, and we're using a reverse pyramid scheme here. So you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps, followed by two reverse pyramid sets where you drop about five to 10% of resistance each time. Note that if you're not strong enough to do weighted chin ups yet, you can always just do regular chin ups for these. But I really want you to be trying to focus on progressing and getting stronger and eventually adding weight. Next, we have incline dumbbell bench press for the chest, three sets of six to 10. After that, dumbbell flies also for the chest, three sets of 10 to 15. And while you're on the bench, you can superset with single arm dumbbell rows for the back, three sets of 10 to 15. One of the issues you'll find as you get stronger as an intermediate to advanced athlete is that you're gonna get too strong for the dumbbells in your gym. So putting these later in the workout and programming them in higher rep ranges can allow you to get more out of using lighter dumbbells. Since your back's already fatigued after doing weighted chin-ups, you won't be as strong for this movement, and we've programmed it in a higher rep range. So keep in mind that an exercise doesn't have to be programmed in a certain slot in your workout by default. Just because something may seem like a main movement, it can always still be programmed later on if you have a specific reason for doing it. Then we have straight arm pull-downs for the back, two sets of 12 to 20, and after that, cable ladder raises for the side delts, three sets of 12 to 20. And you'll see that I'm making modifications all over the place as usual, slipping some side delt work in on our chest and back day to give you that extra frequency. Next, we have shoulder and arm day. We have dumbbell overhead press. These hit the front delts, but also a bit of the upper pecs and triceps, three sets. And you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps, and then do two reverse pyramid sets after that. Then we have overhead cable extensions for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12. Following that, barbell upright rows for the side delts, three sets of 10 to 15. And know that these are in a higher rep range than where we had them earlier in the week. After that, incline bicep curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. Rope press downs for the triceps, three sets of 12 to 20. And you can superset these with rope hammer curls on the cable stack two sets of 10 to 15. Notice that I've taken advantage of this shoulder and arm day to fit in our dumbbell overhead presses, which gives this movement a bit of priority since you can train it when you're fresh. And since shoulders and arms are a relatively easier day, I'll try and fit in our tougher shoulder movement barbell upright rows here. So this is why I put the upright rows here and not on the chest and back day, even though I am putting some side delt work on this day. Finally, we have leg day number two. We start off with RDLs for the glutes and hamstrings. We're using a reverse pyramid scheme here again, three sets, and you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of six to 10 reps, followed by two reverse pyramid sets, dropping about five to 10% off the bar each time. Then we have Smith machine squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12, leg curls for the hamstrings, three sets of 10 to 15, and then leg presses for the quads, three sets of eight to 12. And you can superset these on the leg press machine with calf raises for the calves, five sets of 10 to 15. This seems like a lot of sets, but your calves recover fairly quickly, so you don't need as much rest with these. Note that I have you alternating gluten hamstring and quad movements on this leg day, and I like doing this because it gives your quads and your hamstrings a little bit of time to rest in between movements. This could allow you to perform a bit better on them overall. What program do you guys wanna see me cover next? Let me know in the comments below. I am the king of free hypertrophy programming on YouTube, and I'm always looking for new programming techniques to show you guys. Okay guys, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about the weekly layout. So we've got pull day, push day, leg day number one, chest and back day, shoulders and arms, legs two, and rest. So we have our push pull leg segment first in the week, followed by the Arnold split segment. And you'll see that I mixed up the order of the push pull legs split. Couple of things to note here. By switching push and pull days, we move pull day away from our leg day. This is nice because it allows us to spread out our axial loading, which typically comes in the form of heavy squats, deadlift variations, and rows. So we can place heavy barbell rows on this pull day and have the fatigue spread out from doing squats and RDLs elsewhere in the week. Also, it allows me to implement a modification of the push-pull leg split, where you saw me take biceps off of pull day and move it onto push day and swap it for some of our side delt work. This allows us to train our biceps when they're fresh and not fatigued after pulling movements. And it solves one of the inherent disadvantages of the push-pull leg split, which I typically quite dislike. It also spreads out our side delt volume so we can fit in more productive volume. 
Note that we do have a chest and back day coming after leg day and this is somewhat of a disadvantage because if you're really fatigued after a tough leg day, you may not perform as well on your chest and back day coming after that. But you'll notice that I placed our heaviest axial loaded leg movement, which is RDLs, on this leg day number two where you actually have a rest day coming after it. So you can be strategic in where you place movements to manage fatigue. Note that if you have shoulders and arms and chest and back coming back to back, you want the shoulders and arms coming after your chest and back training because your arms do get involved with pushing and pulling movements. So if you're sore from direct arm training, you may not perform as well on your chest and back training. And this is one of the reasons why I liked swapping push and pull in this order because it allows you to put biceps after back. So this modification I made wouldn't be ideal if it was the other way around and you had bicep training and then back training. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this six day push pull legs Arnold hybrid split. Starting off with the pros, this program allows you to train your shoulders and arms when they're fresh with a dedicated shoulder and arm day. And this is a feature of the Arnold split that we get in this hybrid program. I really like the idea of being able to train your shoulders and arms when they're fresh and not fatigued after pushing and pulling movement, which happens in a lot of popular splits like upper lower and push pull legs. So I typically say that the Arnold split is a good split for people who want to bring up their arms and shoulders. You can see that in this split, we have a bit of a compromise where you just get one day of that in the week, but that could very well be enough for you depending on your goals. Next, you get a high frequency of shoulder and arm training in this program. You'll see that side delts and biceps are trained four times per week, particularly when when you take into account the fact that biceps are trained indirectly with back training. The triceps get trained three times per week because they do get involved on that chest and back day. Next, this program gives a little bit of priority to back training. As you saw, we place pull day first in the week right after your rest day. And the day coming after a rest day is a little bit unique in that you're the most rested for that workout and you will perform a little bit better. You'll also notice that I started off our chest and back day with weighted chin ups as our priority movement. So I did design this program with a focus in mind of trying to bring up your back a little bit. I think that a lot of people don't give enough priority to their backs. And even though it isn't a mirror muscle, it is really important for developing that V taper and an aesthetic physique. Finally, this program allows you to give some priority to accessory presses, namely with that shoulder and arm day. Often overhead presses get relegated to after horizontal pressing movements like bench press. And it's nice to have a day when you train those first in the workout so you can really give it some priority. As you saw, this program features a reverse pyramid scheme for our main movements. This should allow you to hybridize some strength and high hypertrophy training in one program. Okay, now let's talk about the cons of this push-pull legs Arnold hybrid program. First of all, with this program, you have chest and back day coming after leg day number one. As we mentioned earlier, this is somewhat of a disadvantage because if you're really tired after your leg day, you may not perform as well for chest and back. Notice that I have addressed this by putting slightly easier leg movements on leg day number one. You'll see that leg day number one is a bit more quad focused and leg day number two is more hamstring focused. And quad type movements tend to be less fatiguing overall than heavy gluten hamstring movements. I've also placed our higher priority pushing and pulling movements earlier in the week on the push pull legs segment. So for our back training, barbell rows came first and then we had our weighted dips, which was our heavy chest movement. So you'll see that I placed relatively lower priority movements on chest and back day after leg day. Next, with this program, you have shoulders coming after chest and back, and this is just part of the Arnold split where you typically have chest back, shoulders and arms, and leg day. Some people don't like the fact that you have chest and then shoulders back to back, but you can get around this with exercise selection as well as auto-regulation. And that is our next point where you do have to have the ability to auto-regulate in this program, which means modifying your training depending on how you're feeling. This really has to come into play when you're using that reverse pyramid type scheme because you have to be able to push yourself even though the weights are going down. You may be able to get more reps after you drop weight off the bar, and you have to be able to push yourself to a certain reps and reserve target or RIR, rather than just following a prescribed number of reps. For example, with weighted dips, your reps might go from six to seven, then eight reps, since you're dropping the weight with each set. And you have to be honest with yourself so you're not just going easier when you drop the weight. If you wanna get a copy of this program, you can join my Facebook group and download the program for free. The link to the Facebook group is in my description. Join the group and you can download the Excel file. If you've been training hard for a while and you haven't been seeing the physique transformation that you want, check out my book, 
Dr. Swole's Fat Loss and Body Recomposition Manual, where I teach you how to eat properly to lose fat and continue to build muscle. Nutrition plays a huge role in bodybuilding, and the principles actually aren't that difficult once you master the foundations. To see an example of a full Arnold split set up for six days per week, check out this video where I share a full hypertrophy program based on that split. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more. I put out a new free hypertrophy program every week, as well as tons of other science-based fitness advice. We'll see you next time.